Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom, welcome to today's Daf Nida Daf Ein Beis. We will begin at the Mishnah on Daf Ein Alf Omer Beis towards the bottom. Haroya Yom Achadoser. If an Isha sees Dam on day 11 of her Yimei Ziva, now the Allah is that initially if an Isha sees Dam, She's a nida for the next seven days, irrelevant of whether she does or doesn't see any dam during those days, after which she's toivel. And then begin the 11 yimei ziva, the achad asar yimei ziva. Now Allah on those days is as follows. If she sees one day, say she sees on day number one, she needs to be shoymer yoyim kineged yoyim. She needs to observe one day of tahara to correspond to the day of riyah, meaning the beginning of day number two needs to be bitahara. Mixes hayoyim is kikuloi. We apply the halacha that a little bit part of a day has a significance in certain halachas as if the whole day was already kept. And she can be toivel and be tar, but the tahara is pending. It depends on further developments on day number two. If she doesn't see any more dam, then certainly she's tar. But if she should see dam again on that day, then the ri'ya on that day is mitzar if it combines with yesterday's ri'ya. And she is tummy lima freya. It's a retroactive tumor, meaning it cancels and nullifies her mikvah her tahara of that morning. And she needs to be shemir yom kineged yom once again, which is day number three. And the same story again. If she is shemir yom, she's clean in the beginning of day number three. She can be toivel and she's tahar. And this tahara is dependent upon what's going to happen on the rest of the day. If she is tahar, fine. Otherwise, if she sees again, and now it's already three days in a row, day number one, day number two, and day number three. Now she's considered to be a Zava Gedoyla and is required to be Sefer Shivan Akim to count seven clean days and afterwards she's Tevel. Now after the 11 Yimei Ziva begin again the, the Yimei Nida. Meaning after the Yur Aleph Yimei Ziva are over even if she's to see Dam it is not anymore Dam Ziva but rather Dam Nida. Of course she's not a Nida yet until she sees. We're speaking about potential, meaning those Yimei Nida, which follow the Yimei Ziva, are potential Yimei Nida. If she sees Dam, she is going to be a Nida once again. Now, day number 11 is very unique. It's different than the other Yimei, Yimei Ziva. Why is that? Because all other days have a potential of developing into being a Zavag Dayla, meaning if she sees a Ri on day number 1, she can go ahead and see on day number 2 again, and then day number three, and now she's a Zavag Dayla. However, day 11, Yaymir Aleph, doesn't have that option, doesn't have that possibility. It doesn't contain with it a potential of ever turning and evolving and developing into a Zavag Dayla. Why is that? Very simple. Because what, what is the day after day 11? That's Yimei Nida. Day number 12 is already Yimei Nida. During the Yimei Nida, she can't become a Zava. So now the question is, what about a Zavak Tana? What about the Halacha of Shemeris Yem Kineged Yem? If an Isha sees on day 11, is she Mechiv, is she obligated to be Shemer Yem Kineged Yem on account of that Riyah? Or not? Perhaps do we say that since the Yem Yer Aleph cannot become into a Zavak Dayla, cannot combine with the, with the following day, with the subsequent, subsequent days, therefore, day Yem Yer Aleph doesn't even contain with it the, the Halachas of Shemeris Yem Kineged Yem. If she is to see on day 11, she is not mechuyiv to be shayim yom kineged yom either. So we have a machlekes v'shamei mesilo in this mishnah. Haroya yom achadas haryom. If she sees on day 11, v'tavla le'erev, and she is tevel on that very night, v'shimsha, and she does tashmish v'shamei yomrim, she is a full-fledged zava. She requires shmir yom kineged yom, and that night, since it is still before she was shayim yom kineged yom. That only happens at the beginning of day 12. Therefore, metam and mishkov and moishav. The isha and the isha are metame, what they sit and lie on, meaning they are considered to be tmeim. Her tumah carries over to the bayil as well. V'chayav mekarm. They are mechayiv to being a carbon on account of being bayil a zava. V'sil alayim no, that is not the halacha. Yoyim yud aleph, day 11, does not require her to be shayim or yoyim kineged yoyim. And therefore, certainly on the actual yoyim or she's tamay. But if the yom is over and it's already night, and now she's tevil min ha she's already tar. Ve'sil loymin p'tur min ha 
they are potter from bringing a carbon. Since Minatera, she is Tahira. Now, why does Basil only discuss carbon and not Tuma? So Rashi explains that even according to Beis Hillel, there is Xerah de Rabbanon regarding Tuma. Why is that? Because since, if what took place here would have happened on any other of the Yimei Ziva, say for example on day number one of her Yimei Ziva, she would have seen on day number one, that night would have been Tevil, Minatera, she's still Tameh. Because a Re'iyah on day number one does require her to be Shomer Yoyim Kneged Yoyim, meaning she has to be Shomer day number two. Until then, she's Tameh Minatera. Therefore, if what took place here would have happened on any other day, they would have been Tameh. So there's a Xerim the Rabbanon to apply Tumah, in, in our case as well, in order to avoid confusion. But that's only regarding Tumah the Rabbanon. However, Minatera, since she's Tar, they are Potter from Karvan. Continues the Mishnah. Tavla B'yoyim Shal Achrof. If she was Tavil on day number 12, meaning she was Shem Yom Kineged Yom, she was Tavil, Vishim Shez Beisa, Va'ach HaKach Rasa, and afterwards she found Dam. So, let's remember, we're talking about day number 12, which is already the first day of her Yomei Nida. So even though she's seeing Dam now, it's Dam Nida. It will not combine, it will not be Mitzitarif with yesterday's Ria. Today's Dam is Dam Nida. Yesterday's uh, Dam, is Dam Ziva, they don't combine with each other. So if she's tummy now, it's only going forward. It's not retroactive, it's not mafri at all. And therefore, Minat Teira, what took place this morning until, up until the Riyah, stay, stays in its place. It's maintained. She's still tired regarding what happened until the Riyah. And therefore, meaning they're only Metame, Midrabon, Uptur Minakarban. They are Pata Minakarban, since Minat Teira, there was no tumah, there was no retroactive tumah. However, midrabanon, they are still matami. And why is that? Because once again, there's a gzeir midrabanon. Because if this would have taken place on any other day, on any other of the yimei ziva, for instance, if she would have seen on day number one of the yimei ziva, which requires a shmir shem kineged yoyim on day number two, and she was shamer at the beginning of the day, she was tevil, they were mishamish, but then she saw again, as we mentioned earlier, her tahara was pending. As soon as she sees again, it nullifies, it cancels the tahara, and they are indeed metame she's metame lemafreya, and they they were they turn out to both be tame. Retroactively, they were both tame. So therefore, since in that case there would be a tumah midhatayra, so chachamim made a gzera to metame her in our case of day number twelve as well to avoid confusion. No, there isn't even a tumah midrabanon. It is merely hareza gagron. He's a guzzler. It's a very inappropriate behavior. Meaning, since um, during the other Yimei Ziva, this behavior is not acceptable. Meaning, if she sees on day number one. Day number two, she's Tevil. And she's Tar. But since the Tahara is only pending, it is dependent on further developments on that day. They have to wait and see. Therefore, he's not allowed to be boiled until they are certain that she'll be Tar. Meaning, they have to wait until the end of the day. Since it is unaccept- an unacceptable behavior during the other Yimei Ziva, so to Chachamim Aser, they forbid him from, they call him a Gargaran at least, and they very much discourage this type of behavior even on day 12 because of Xera to avoid confusion. Continues the Mishnah. Umaydim, Bisham and Bisil both agree in the following case, meaning only on day 11 do we have a discussion. Whether of whether there's a chiv shmir siyam connected yam or not, however, on a reiyah that took place on any other one of the yemei ziva, certainly there's no machlekes there. Umaydim b'roya b'seichid alaf yam. If she saw in any other of the alaf yam, v'tavla le'erev, she was tevel that night. V'shimsha, she was meshamish. Certainly in that case, shemetam and mishka v'moisha v'chayavim b'karban. Why is that? Because they're tamim and atayra until she is shamer. The next day, Betahara, she is Tamei Minatera. There's no Machlekes about that. Tavel of Yem Shal Say it's already day number two. She was already Shamer Mixas Hayyim, and she was Tavel. So at that point, she's Tar, but it is only a pending. It's only dependent. It's dependent on what's going to happen that day. It is still Tali. It is hanging. So, as we mentioned before, they're not allowed to be Mashamish. They can't take a risk, they can't take a chance. What if they do go ahead and do that? Bishimsha, Harezu Tarvis it's bad behavior. Umagon, whatever they touch, Ubi Lasan, and the actual Bila regarding Adi Mukhiva Karban or not, Tulayan. 
It's all pending. Meaning we don't know. We have to wait till the end of the day to conclude on the status of the taharas that they may have touched and also regarding their achiv carbon. If she maintains taharas, they were lucky. So the taharas remain to her and they're potem and carbon. But if she should go ahead and see again after the Tashmish, then retroactively she was Tomei, they are Matami Mishkev Amoyshav, and they are Chayav Bekarbon. So in conclusion, we have four levels of um, categories in this Mishnah. We have a tuma, a case of Tumah Menat Torah, and a Chayav Karbon Menat Torah. We have another case of Tumah Menat Torah that is Tully, meaning it is a pending Tumah. We have a third case of a Tumah only Medrabana with a Ptur carbon, and we have the final case of Hareza Gargaran, a guzzler, a very discouraged form of behavior. Meaning, if there was a Re'iya on day number one, for example, that is a Re'iya which is Machayev Shem Yerim Kineged Yoyim, in that case, it is a Tumah Min HaTorah until she is Shem Yerim Kineged Yoyim. If she is Shemer the next day, and, there is, and she is Toivel, at that point, the Tumah is pending, it's Tali. However, if the Riyah took place on day 11, so be, according to Be'i Shammai, there's no difference between day 11 and day number 1. She, she needs to be Shem Yom K'neged Yom. She is Tumah Min HaTorah until she does Shemir Yom K'neged Yom. And regarding a carbon as well. She is M'chid of a carbon until she is Shem Yom K'neged Yom. However, according to Be'i Silo, it is only a Tumah Mid Regarding the next day, day number 12, if she was Shomer that day, and she was Toivel, and they were Meshamish, so according to Beishamai, there is a Chi, and she sees again, she's dumb again, according to Beishamai, it is Tumad Midrabonon, according to Beishilol, it is merely a Gargaron. Continues the Gemara. Tana Rabonon, we learned in the price. Vishavan, Beishamai and Beishil both agree if she sees during the Yir Aleph Yimei Ziva, any other day aside from day 11, there's no Machlekes. Vishavan, Beteveles, Laila Lizava, she sees, say, on day number one, and she's table immediately that night, she ain't a tefila. Tefila doesn't count. Why? Because she's obligated to be shayim yom kineg yom. She ain't a tefila. V'shav and b'roya, and the Bryce explains again, V'shav and they agree, b'roya b'soyichid alaf yom, v'tavla l'era b'shimsha, shemetava mishka v'mayishav, v'chayav v'makarvan. Certainly in that case, of a re'iya, on day number one of the meziva, she is Tame, they are Chayiv carbon up until she is Matar herself by being Shayim or Yayim Kineged Yayim. When is there a Machlekes? Ella only be Yayim Yeral of Yayim on day 11. She be Shami Oymer and Metam and Mishka of Amoysha and Chayiv and Bekarbon. Be Shami maintain that day 11 is no different than the rest of the Yimei Ziva. O be Silalim Paitrim Mekarbon, be Silalim no, day 12 does not obligate Shmir Shem connected Yom, and therefore that night she can be Toivel, and not Torah, she is Tor and Potter from carbon. Omer Lam Besham Bissel. What's going on? Maishna Yom Midalaf, Mi Yom Toichidalaf. Why are you differentiating between day 11 and the rest of the days? In Meshiva Loy Tumah, if you yourself, Bissel, are equating day 11 to the other days regarding Tumah, you've said that they are Tamitami Mishka Vamoyshav. Although it is a re of day 11, so you're equating it regarding Tumah, so why are you not equating them regarding carbon? Why are you not Machayev a carbon? There's no, there's no kasha, there's no comparison. If, if somebody sees Dam on the other days, say on day number one, Certainly in that case, there's a chiyah to be shayim yom keneged yom. Why? Shekein yom shela achrav mitzarev yom leziva. Because the day following day number one, day number two, and day number three, can be mitzarev with day number one to make her into azava, to azava gedayla. And therefore, it is logical, it makes sense that day number one would have all the dinim of ziva and would be mechayev shmir yom keneged yom. Taimru, how could you compare? How could you say? Be yom yidalef on day 11, that it should also have the same halachas. Shein yom shel achrav shen starfim with leziva. Day eleven is, has a disadvantage. He is different than the other days. Day eleven cannot be with starf with the subsequent days to make her into azava gedola. And therefore, since day eleven 
cannot be mitzarev with the following days. Therefore, it doesn't have any chiyav of being shomer yayim kenegedim. It has a disadvantage. It's different than the other days. It can't be mitzarev with day number twelve. Meaning, the re'ia of day number twelve will never combine with re'ia of day number eleven. And therefore, regarding the re'ia of day eleven, it is also exempt from the halacha of being shomer yayim kenegedim. Amr lem beishamai hashum mideseichem. Why aren't you consistent with your position? Again, in Shiva you agree that even the Re'iyah of day 11 brings with it a Tuma that night, the night after day 11. Even after she's Tavi, you agree that she's still Tame. So why not regarding carbon? Yash carbon. We should equate Re'iyah of day 11 to the other days also regarding carbon. If you are not Machayi of carbon, why are you being Matama them? Ahamalan Besilel. What's the shayach? What's the comparison between Tumah and Karavan? If we apply the halachas of Tumah, in this case, that is only a chumah. It's only a chumah with the Rabbanon. Certainly with the Raisa, they're not Tumah in this case. When she saw on day 11, and she was table that night, there was no requirement to be shayim yayim kineged yayim min It is only a chumah with the Rabbanon, like we mentioned before, it's exera. Loi nevi eo de karavan hakel. We can't possibly be mechayiv, obligated to be a carbon, to bring a carbon that they're not mechayiv in Atayra. They would be bringing chulun azara. They would actually be, be uh, causing a kula here. We can't do that. V'oid, in addition, says Vesil to Veshamay, midivreichem atem noishchem. From your own words, you, you, are, you are biting, you are contradicting yourself. Why? She'atem oimrim, because you yourself are saying, tov l'yayim shala achrof. If she is toivel on the day following day 11, Meaning, on day 12, if she was Shem Yom Kineged Yom, and she is Toivel, and then Vishimsha, she was Mishamish, Va'achachach Rasa, and afterwards she saw Dan, you yourself are admitting, agreeing, Shemetame Mishka Vamoshav of Turbina Karban. In the Mishnah you said that in that case, there is Xerid Rabbanon applied, and they are Metame Midrabbanon, they are Metame Mishka Vamoshav, although they are not Mechayi Vakarban. So you see, you yourself are differentiating sometimes between Tumah and Karavan. You too should, should be consistent in your halachis. If you are equating this case to the other days regarding Tumah, what about Karavan? Why are you being pattering? Why are you not being Mechaiva Karavan? If you're not equating this day to the other days regarding Karavan, so why then are you being metame? So the same argument you're giving us can be applied to your, yourself as well. Ella, you must say the answer is lahachmer leilahakil. You're simply being stringent. You're being machmer. You're imposing a tumah medirabbanon, but not regarding carbon. To be mechayiv the carbon would necessitate bringing chul nazara, which, which would actually be a kula, and that we're not, we're not empowered to do. Hachanami, so too in our case, lahachmer leilahakil. We're just trying to be machmer, and we can't bring a kula. We can't allow them to bring Chul Nazara. Meaning that if she sees on Yom Yom Aleph on day 11 and she's tabled that night, although we apply Xer de to be Machmer, to be Matam with them, that's strictly regarding a Chumrah, regarding Tumah, but not to allow them to bring Chul Nazara. So, in conclusion, there was an argument between Yisil and Beishamai regarding day 11. Beishamai holds it is equated to any other day of Yimei Ziva and it requires Shmir Yishem Kineged until tomorrow, until she is Shemer, the beginning of day 12, she is Tmei Min she sees Dam afterwards, she is Tevel on day 12 and she sees Dam afterwards, it is only a Tumah Mafreya Mid Rabbonon, but not a Chiv Karvan. According to Beis Hillel, day number 11 does not require Shmir Yishem Kineged since it cannot be mitzvah. It can never combine with day twelve to make it a double riyah, to make it a two-day riyah. Certainly not to turn it into a three-day riyah as of a Since that's the case, day number eleven has a disadvantage and does not have a chi of shem yom kineged yom. She can be table that night and mitzvah. She's full-fledged tar. However, midrabbanon there's a tuma, but only lahachmer and not lahakil, not regarding allowing them to bring a carbon. Continues the gemara. Amar Afuna, according to Beis Shammai, Beis Shammai says that on day 12, when she is Shem Yem Kineged Yom, for day 11, she was Toivel, and she was Meshamish. 
Afterwards, she sees Dam. She is Tomei Midrabon. Why? It's Xera. Because as we explained earlier, if this were to happen on any other day, on any other one of the Meziva, meaning, for example, if she would have seen Dam on day one of the Meziva, which requires her to be Shemer Yom Kineg Yom day two, if she is Shemer Yom, the beginning of day two, she's Toivel, and at that point she's Tor, but the Tahara is pending. Perhaps she'll see Dam again, and that Riyah will cancel the Tahara, will be a Tumal Mafrei retroactively. So in that case, um, since it is a tuma, it, it is a, uh, a tuma that can happen. Therefore, the chachamim will geyser and were um, metami even on day twelve, because of a that if this would have happened on day two, meaning they would have been mishamish, and then she would have seen dam, it would have been metami lafreya. Therefore, the chazal made a to be metami even on day twelve to avoid confusion. It says Rav Huna, a tremendous chiddush. If we see Beishamai make this type of Xerah, so then, even if she doesn't see, even if day two came along, she saw on day one, she was Shemer at the beginning of day two, and she was Mishamish, even if she never actually saw on day two, there would be a Xerah the Rabbanan, and she would be Tami. Why is that? Because Xerah loy rasa atu rasa, with Geyser, a case where she hadn't seen, Atu Rasa, since if she would have seen, she would be Tamei. So Chacham applied a Tumah, even when she hadn't seen yet, to avoid confusion. It's Xerid Rabbonon. Just like we see that Beishamai, on day 12, in the case where she was Matar herself, and she was Mishamish, and she saw later on, Beishamai was Matamei L'mafreya. Why? Because although now in there's no grounds for Tumah, because the Riyah of later is not Mitzaref, and it's not Metameh Hulam Afreya. Nevertheless, Chachamah made a Gzair Drabon to Metameh because since if this took place on a different one of the Meizah, Ziva, meaning she was Shem Yom Kinek Diyayim, she was Toivah, and then she sees that Riyah indeed would have been Metameh Hulam Afreya. Therefore, the Chazal applied a Tumah in our case as well, Mishum Gzair. Therefore, in the case of a Riyah on day one and day two, she was Shem Yom Kinek Diyayim and she was Toivah, Chacham will apply a Tuma right now, at the present moment, even though she has yet, not yet seen, a gzera, because perhaps she might see. Says the Gemara, Amraf Huna, Mishkava Moshava Shebesheni, her Mishkava and Moshav, what she said or lied on, on day number two, she sees on day number one, which requires Shemir Shem Kinegadi on day number two, and she was Tevel. At this point, Matayr she is to her, however, Midra Banan, there will be a Tuma on her Mishkava Moshav. Beishamai Metamen Afo Pisha Tavla, even though she was already Teufel, even though at this point she has not yet seen and she'll, she'll never, she never saw for the rest of the day either. Still, there will be a Tumah the Rabbanu. My time, why? If she would see, she would be Metameil Mafreya. Retroactively. Hashtanami Metamya. Chacham made exerit to Metam her now as well. Even if there was never an actual Ria that happened during the rest of that day. Um, Rav Yosef, my Kamash Malan, what is he teaching us? It is simple, everybody knows this. Tanina, we've learned, we've already learned this halach in the Mishnah. Tavl Yom Shalachrab, if on day number 12 she was Tavl, Vishim Shaz Besa, Vach Kach Rasa, Vishama Oymer Metama, Mishkavis and Moshavis, Obtur Ben Akarban. We see in the Ferish Mishnah that Vishama say that certainly in a case where she was Shem Yom Knegadim, and she was Misham, she was Tavl, and she was Mishamish, and she sees, Dam, she will be metame mishkav al ma'ishu ma'freya midirabbana. So you see, the Chazal did make exera in this case, even though there were no grounds for tumah midatayra. However, Chazal imposed a tumah midirabbana mishum exera. So what are you teaching us, Rafuna? It's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a very shem mishnah. Veishami explicitly stated this halach in the mishnah. Omer of Kahana, Ross are shiny. How could you compare the halach and the mishnah? In the mishnah, she had a riya. She was raya and therefore, she, since she was Roya Dam on day 12, there was sufficient grounds to apply a Gzair Why? Because if this would have happened on day 2, meaning she was Shem Yom Kinegadayim, beginning of day 2, she was Tevel, and then she sees Dam, in that case she would have been Tamim Therefore, Chacham applied a Tumah Midr 
even on day 12, even if this occurred on day 12. And on, the, on day 12, the Re'iyah is not Metam Mafreya, it is not Metam Minatayra. However, since if this would have happened on day 2, it would have been Metam Minatayra, Chacham had made Xero and Metam her even in this case, to avoid confusion. That's only because it was an actual Re'iyah. However, in the case of Rav Huna, Rav Huna was being Mechalish to us, was teaching us a great Chiddush, that even if there was no Re'iyah, she's still telling him the Rabbanon. Again, she saw on day 1, on the beginning of day two, she was Shem Yem Yem, she was Tevil, and there was never a Ri'a, another Ri'a on that day. Rav Huna wants to tell us that according to Beishamai, she is Tami Mishum Gzeri Durabanan. You have no Raya, you have no proof for that Allah. To that extent, to be Metami and Isha, even if she doesn't see, she's Metami Atu Rasa, Aloy Rasa, Atu Rasa. You don't see that. Where do we find such a Gzeri Durabanan? You can't be a Raya from the Gzeri in our Mishnah. Where she saw on day 12. She's telling the Rabbanon because she saw. Because it was a Riyah. The Gzer the Rabbanon was applied because there was an actual Riyah. Although when I tell her she's tired, the Rabbanon applied a Tumah. Because if this Riyah would have happened on a different day, she would have been Tameh. Here too, the Rabbanon would have been But you have no Raya. You can't compare this to the case of Huna where there was no Riyah. How could you be Tameh Isha if she didn't see anything? So Rav Kahana is really responding to Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef said to Rav, to, to Rav Huna about Rav Huna, Ma'ikah Mashlan, what is he teaching us? It is a Beferish Mishnah. It is an open Mishnah, open Allah and our Mishnah that Agzeri the Rabbanon is applied to this case. So Rav, says Rav Kahana, in our Mishnah there was a Re'iyah. Rav Huna's Chiddush is that even if there was no Re'iyah, she's Tameh. So that is a Chiddush that is not stated in our Mishnah. Omer Rav Yosef, so Rav Yosef responds to Rav Kahana, you're telling me that there's a distinction between our Mishnah and the case of Rav Huna. In our Mishnah there was a Riyah. In Rav Huna's case there was no Riyah. So Dr. Rav Yosef, Om Rav Yosef, says Rav Yosef, V'chira somay havi. Riyah danidahi. Sure there was a Riyah on day 12. But let's remember, day 12, is it one of the Yimei Ziva? Certainly not. It is already a Yom Nida. The Riyah that happened on day 12 does not constitute a Re'iyah of Ziva. It is a totally different category. Now regarding the, the Re'iyahs of the Yimei Ziva, regarding yesterday's Re'iyah, it is totally non-existent. It doesn't combine. It is as though she never saw anything. Halachically speaking, regarding the context of Re'iyahs of Yimei Ziva, it's non-existent. It is as if she didn't see anything. So, and if we see that Bishamai, a goyzer or metameher on grounds, on account of this re'iyah. So evidently, Bishamai, we see that Bishamai is metame and isha, mishum gzeira, even if there was no re'iyah that took place. So similarly, in the case of Rav Huna, on day number two, she'll be tell me even if no re'iyah actually takes place. So, yes, it is an open Mishnah that, according to Bishamai, the gzeira, the rabban, will apply even when there's no re'iyah. And what is Rav Huna teaching us? It is a Beferish Mishnah. Amalei Abayi the Rav Yosef responded Abayi to Rav Yosef. Rav Kahana hachigakashalei. Rav Kahana had the following problem, meaning this that Rav Kahana said, Ra so shiny. He was coming to explain why you can't prove, you can't infer the halacha of Rav Huna to be matame isha on day number two when there is no re'iyah. You can't compare that to our Mishnah, because our Mishnah, in our Mishnah there was a Riyah. What Rav Kahana meant to say was as follows. It's actually a Kasha. I have a difficulty with Rav Huna's Chiddush. How could you go ahead and say that Chacham were Matam and Isha when there was no Riyah? Rish Leimah, all is good and well. Hecha de Rasa. When Isha does see, for instance in the case of our Mishnah, if she sees Dam, so Chacham will say, well, if this Riyah would happen a different day, she would have been Tame. So here too we'll be Metame. Gazrina, Riyah, Daniyah, Da, Atu Riyah, Dezava. We'll be Geyser, although this is a Riyah of Anida. We'll be Geyser and be Metame her Atu, since if this would have happened during the Riyah of Ziva, she would have been Tame. Here too she'll be Tame. Ella, Hechad, Eloi, Rasa, my Nigzerbe. But how could you say, how could it enter your mind to be Metame Isha when she hadn't seen yet? There's no grounds to be Geyser when there was no Riyya. You can't say it would be Metame Isha when there was no Riyya or to Agzera Mishum Rasa. We don't find such a thing. Meaning that what Rav Kahana meant to say was 
that um, even though in our, in our Mishnah it's a Re'iyah of Anida and halachically, you're right Rabbi Yosef, this is not really a, a Re'iyah in the context of the Ziva classification. With regard, with regard to Ziva, this is not considered the day, the day, the Re'iyah of day 12 is not considered a proper Re'iyah. And therefore, you, you were telling me Rabbi Yosef that uh, Rav Huna's Chiddush can be inferred from the Mishnah and it is indeed a tremendous Chiddush and you can't ask, Shita, my Kamash what is Rafuna teaching us in Fair Shalach in the Mishnah? You're right on that, on that account. The Riyah of the Mishnah is indeed a, a, a Riyah of a Nida, and regarding Ziva, it is non existent. What I meant to ask was as follows. Logically speaking, how could Rafuna be Matam and Isha wasn't Raya? The case in the Mishnah, the case, in the case of Mishnah, she was a Raya. Practically speaking, there was a Riyah. Whether we're considering it a Riyah of a Ziva, or considering a Riyah of, of a, a Nida, Lamaisa, practically speaking, there was a Riyah. And therefore, there is enough grounds to be Matamad Isham because of Xerid Rabbanon. How could your Rafun be Mechalash to me? That even in the case where there was no Riyah at all that took place, there was a Riyah on day number one, and day number two, she was Shemim Tahar, she was table, and now for the rest of the day, no Riyah actually took place. You're going to go be Matamad her as well? That is a tremendous Chiddush. How can you do that? So that is Machlaik is bin Rafun Rafkan. Rafun says, even if there's no Riyah, we apply Xerid Rabbanon. Because since if she would see, she would be tummy. So even prior to seeing, she's tummy with the Rabbanon. On day number two. Rav Kana says, we don't find such a Chiddush. That's impossible. We, we're not metame Isha if she doesn't see. There's no such a thing as, as a, a Tumah for Isha that wasn't Raya, Gzeir Mishum Rasa. Says the Gemara, in addition, I have a Raya from a Mishnah a lot like you. I have a Raya that if Isha sees on day number one and she needs to be shomer yom kineged yom on day number two and she was shomer and she was tevil at that point there's no tumah derabbanon at all her tahara is pending we have to wait and see what happens the rest of the day but if she is indeed, indeed clean for the rest of the day there was no tumah that happened on the rest of the day of yom beis we don't find any tumah derabbanon applied in this case how do we see that? right now we see in the mission haroya riya achas if a man, if Ish sees one Riyah, his Tahara is pending. Even if he's table now, he has to wait and see what happens tomorrow. He has the same din as an Isha. There is no halacha of Shmir Yem Kinegdiyam applied to an Ish. He is just a Balkari, which has a Tumakala, a lenient Tuma. But Tanya, we learned further, if somebody is to move the Riyah, the Ziva that he saw, we, it is pending. We have to wait and see what happens um, the rest of the day. Meaning, if there's no second ziva, fine, and it's tar, then he's only a balkari. If a second riyah comes along, then he'll be tame tuma ziva. But up until then, he is tar, and there's no tuma drabban applied as well. Obesilel metaren mishkavis, obesil metaren. Obesil say no. When a Zav sees, a person, a man sees one Re'iyah, there is no halacha of Shmir Yishem K'nei Yom, he is completely tar if he's Tevel, and there is no need to be Shemir Yom K'nei Yom. Meaning, that his Tahara is not pending. Even if he'll go see another Ziva, he'll be Tomei going forward, but not retroactively. The concept of Shmir Yishem K'nei Yom, where an Isha needs to be shamed the next day with Tahara, and she sees the next day, it combines with the previous day to Mitama we'll retroactively, that only applies to an Isha, not an Ish. So again, there's a Machlaikis, Bisham Bisil, if a man sees one Re'iyah, whether the Rehalacha of Shemer Shem Kenek will apply. Continues the Brahe, If a man was to lie or sit on something between the first and second Re'iyahs, so again, the, there's a Machlaikis, Bisham Bisil, according to Bisham Toilin, since he needs to be Shem Yem Kenek so his status is pending. Let's see what happens. If he sees another Riyah, then retroactively he was a Ziva Azov to begin with, and he was Matami's Mishka Bamaisha. Going to be still Matar, no. His Tumma will be going forward from the second Riyah and on, he will be Tami, but not retroactively. Oktani Reisha. Now, if we go back to Reisha, what did the Reisha say? Haroya Riyah Acha Shalzaev. If he sees one Riyah, Beshamir Aimim, Kushamir Jem Kinegadyoim. He has a din of Beshamir Jem Kinegadyoim. And what happens then? The Mishnah, the Brisa, the Brisa said that according to Bishamah, it's toilet. His tahara is pending. 
There's no tuma to have been applied. There's no tuma at all until we see what happens. If he sees again, then retroactively he'll be tummy. If he doesn't see, then he'll be tar gummer, he'll be tar completely tar without any tumma drabonum. Almost we see from here. Shemer is Yem Kinegadim. Since we compared him to Shemer Yem Kinegadim, so we see by Isha as well, who is being Shemer Yem Kinegadim, the Beishamay Toilet. On her second day, on day number two, she merely has to wait it out and see what happens. But there is no Tumad Rabbanon applied. So it's a Kash on Rafuna. Rafuna said that even on day number two, there is a Tumad Rabbanon applied, even if there is no Re'iyah that actually took place. And says the Gemara Loi. Don't say, revise the price. don't say that an ish who sees a ziva, a one ziva, he has a din according to Bishama as like a shemeris yem kineged yem. Don't say that. But rather, he has a din like a man who is boil, a isha who is shemeris yem kineged yem. In that case, certainly there is no tumor that Rabbanon applied to the boil, and therefore it is a good comparison. We're comparing a man who sees a Riya to a boil shemer yem kineged yem, and therefore he merely has to wait it out. There's no doom the Rabbanon applied. He has to wait out and see what happens if he'll see another time or if he won't. Either way, regardless, the tumor will be going forward. If he sees again, there will be a tumor from the second Riyah going forward, not on Freya. But you have no Raya. You can't infer from here. What is the halach of an Isha who is a Shemer Yisrael Meknei Yisrael? In that case, certainly, even on day two, even if she was already Shemer Yisrael Meknei Yisrael, she was Tevil, and she hadn't seen anything yet, there will be a tumor the Rabbanon applied to her. That is Rav Huna's response. Ask the Gemara, you're making a differentiation between a Shemer Yisrael Meknei Yisrael, where the Chacham applied a Tumah, a Tumah even if she hadn't seen, even if she was a lawyer also, and you're making a distinction between that and an Ish who is Boil a Shemer Yisrael Meknei Generally speaking, the Boil has the same din as the Isha. But in this case you're saying that the Chacham did not apply a Tumah to the Boil. His status is pending. He is not Metamed Rabbanon, unless there was an actual Riyah. Why is that so? Why are you being matired the Ish and not applying Xerah Durabana, Tumah Durabana, and regarding the Isha, there is a Tumah Durabana? Maishna Ihu, the Loi Metab Mishka of Moshev, why regarding him, he is not Metab Mishka of Moshev Durabana, or Maishna, why I, by her, the Metab Mule, you're being Metab Muhammad Durabana, answers the Gemara, Ihu, the Loi Shrikhi Bey Domin, by a man, a man. There is, it is not usual for him to see Dam. He is not a source of Dam. Like God's Rabbanon. Rabbanon will not go by him to be Matamim. However, I, the Isha, the Shrikhi Badamim, it is common, it is usual to find by her Dam. She is a source of Dam. Therefore, God's Rabbanon, Hacham will go by her to be Matamim, her, even if she wasn't Roya. If she's holding during the second day, during the Shemer Shem Kneg Diyayim, even if she hadn't seen yet, she's Tamei Mid Rabbanon. Continues the Gemara. Why is it that she is metami her mishka of Moshe medrabanan? Or myishna boil loy metami le? Why is she not metami the boil? Tosis Rosh explains the Gemara's kasha is that if you're being metami the isha, if you're considering her to be tummy, so she should be metami the boil just by coming into contact with him. But Thomas Maga answers the Gemara mishka of Moshe of the shchiach for a woman to lie or sit on something and be metami it. It's common. It's usual shchiach. Therefore, metamile, chachamim apply the xera. Boil a person to be boil a tmei of the loy shchiach. Something uncommon, loy metamia. Therefore, the chacham will not metame the man. So, in conclusion, we had a din in the Mishnah xera drabanan, where even though there's no tumah teira, chachamim imposed a tumah medrabanan, and that applied in three different cases. It applied to if an isha sees on day eleven. According to Beis Hillel, that night she could be Toivel, and when Toivel she's Toivel, however, Midra Banan, she's still Tomei. Why is that? It's Xerah, because if this would have happened on a different day, it would have been Metame. Chacham applied a Tumah to this case as well. We have another case. On day 12, if she is Shem Yem Kinegadoyim, she is Toivel, she is Meshamish, and then she was a Rasa. According to Beis Shamai, she is Tomei Midra Banan, since she was Rasa, and if this would have taken place on a different day, on the other Yimei Ziva, she would have been Tami Lafreya, therefore the Chacham applied a Tumah to day 12 as well. And then we have Rav Huna's Chiddush, that takes Rishamah's Chiddush and stretches it a bit further. He says, even on, on day 2, meaning if she saw 
on day one, and she was showing me yoyim on day two, and she was toivel, and she hadn't seen anything for the rest of the day, still hachamim imposed a tumah de Rabban on that day. Rav Kahana disagreed with Rav Puna. Rav Kahana says you cannot be matam and isha, she hadn't seen anything. Continues the Gemara. Tanan, tov yam we have a in the Mishnah. If an isha sees on day one, and day number two she was shamer tahara, and she was toivel, Vishimsha, and she was Mishamish on that day. Harezu Tarbus Ra, it's a very bad behavior. Magon will be lost on Tluim. Their actions are pending. They're totally. Why? Because if she sees that day, the Tuma on day two will be Matam Freya, Menatoira. My love, is it not Divriya Koili? Is the safe of this Mishnah not following the Shita of everybody? Meaning, even according to Beishamai. And what does it say in the Mishnah? There's no tumor to Rabbanon. It is pending. We'll wait and see. If she sees again, she's telling me not to tell her retroactively. Otherwise, she's tar. And we don't find any tumor to Rabbanon imposed in this case. So we have a raya. We have a kasha on Rafuna's Chiddush. We see a, a fairish mission. The mission states very clearly that there's no such thing as tumor to Rabbanon without a riyah. It says the Gemara loy basilili. This is only following the sheet of basilil. And according to Bishamai, there would still be a tumor de Rabbanon in this case. The sign of Linton of Raisa. That, and we see from this Raisa that the safe of the Mishnah is following Basil. Amr Lahem, Rabbi Yudel Basil. To this, to this behavior you're calling Tarbus Ra bad behavior? The case where a person is boiling Isha on the day that she's being shown Yom Kinegadim? How could you only call it merely a Tarbus Ra? This man intended to be boiling Ida. It's not just a bad behavior, it's a terrible thing. Says the Gemara, Nida Sankadayatach. We're not speaking about Nida, we're speaking about a Zava. Ela Eima, but say, Livol Asa Zava. Rabbi was telling Basil, this man had intended to be Baal Zava. Says the Gemara, Zava Sankadayatach. She's not a Zava either. She was already Shemir Yem Kinegadim. She was Tevil. Technically speaking, she's still Tar. Why are you calling her a Zava? Ela Eima, but say, Livol Shemir Yem Kinegadim. This man, this man had intended to be boiled with Shemir Zem It's a terrible thing. He's taking an awesome risk. A very, very serious um, risk he's taking. If she sees down, she'll be tumbling off frame and not tire. So it's not just merely tarbus ra. So Rabbi had a problem with the terminology of Basil. But nevertheless, you see that who is the man de Omar? Who is this Shita? This is Basil. So Rafuna respond, responds and says that this safe of the Mishnah is merely Basil. However, according to Beishamai, Certainly, there will be a tumah de Rabbanon applied even in this case of a lawyer as he had, had Rafunas had, had stated earlier. Continues the Gemara. It's my we've learned. Asiri, what is the halach of the tenth day? We've learned a Mishnah, in our Mishnah, that the eleventh day, day eleven, there is a machlok is Bisham Vesil. According to Bishamai, she requires Shemir Shem Kinegadim. According to Vesil, there is no such requirement. Why is that? Vesil explained because the day, day eleven cannot combine, cannot be mitzdarif. But the following days, who are already out of the realm of Yimei Ziva. The question is, what about day 10? You see, day 10 could technically be Mitzdarev with day 11. If she sees on day 10, she has to be Shomer day 11. If she sees on day 11 again, she's a Zavak Tana, and she's Tommy. So day 10 could combine with day 11. However, it cannot become a Zavak Dayla. Meaning, day, 12, day 11 cannot carry on to day 12. So the question is, according to Beis Hillel, who exempt day, tw- day 11 from being um, to keep Shemer Yisrael Kinegidoyim, because day 11 cannot combine with the next day, what's going to be with day 10? Do we say, since it carries somewhat potential to advance her status, it could develop into a two-day ziva, if she would see day 11, so is that enough to consider day 11 as an ordinary Yom Ziva, and it requires Shem Yom Kinegidim, or perhaps since it cannot develop into a full-fledged Ziva, since she can't see three days of Ziva, she can only see 10, 11, but no more, so perhaps day, day 10 is also limited and cannot obligate her to be Shem Yom Kinegidim. Again, this is following Shittes Beis Hillel. It says the Gemara, it's Marasiri. Rabbi Yechon Marasiri has the same halach of day 9. Ma Chi Yibayishim, or just like if she sees on day 9, she's required to be Shem Yom Kinegidim on day 10. Afasiri Yibayishimur, Day, not, day 10 also requires Shimur on day 11. Rish Lagash Amar, no. Asiri Kachadasar. Day number 10 has the same Allah as day 11. Ma Achadasar loy boy Shimur, just like 11 doesn't require Shimur. Af Asiri loy boy Shimur, so too day 10 does not require Shimur. Iku Damasin al Some taught the Machlekes of Rabbi Yechon Rish 
in a different version, on a brice. How do you derive the halacha that a person who brings a toida is required to bring a half a lug shaman and not a complete lug? From the fact that Torah repeats the word b'shem and oil twice, we have a klal ein riboy achar riboy el l'rabbi. So when Torah repeats a riboy twice, it's coming to diminish, and therefore a toida is only required to have a half a lug of shaman instead of a lug. That is the source of this halacha according to Rabbi Kiva. Says Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Kiva, that is not the source, that is not the root of this halacha. Even if you'll be marbe, if you'll try to derive from the riboy of Hashem and Hashem the whole day, any Shemelacha, I will not listen to you. Ella, where then do we, de- do we derive this halacha from? Ella chatzish lug shem ala the halacha that a toida requires a half a lug shem, or a vias, a geris, or a vias shem ala and the, the Nazar who requires only a quarter of a lug, that's the second halacha, and the third halacha, the halacha of the eleven days of ziva, between the first yimei nida, Isha sees dam, she's tummy for seven days yimei nida, afterwards come the eleven yimei ziva, afterwards start again the yimei nida, this halacha, this concept, all the halachas that are pertaining to the yimei nida, yimei ziva, halacha l'mayshu me sinai, it is learned from mayshu from sinai, so that was the Machlokis between Rav Lezer and Rav and Rav Kiva. Where do we derive um, these halachas from? So now, on that, on this statement of Rav Lezer and Zayir, that the halachas of Nida and Ziva are halacha and Moshim on that, um, there was a Machlokis of Rav Lezer The terminology of Rav Lezer and Zayir, that achadas her yim, sounds like he's speaking about the actual 11th day as well. There is a halacha pertaining specifically to day 11. And on that, there's a machlekes, Rabbi Yechon Rishlokesh. My halacha. Which halacha applies specifically to day 11? Rabbi Yechon, a halacha, Yeralef. A singular halacha. One halacha will apply to day Yeralef. Rishlokesh, a hilchas achadasar. A plural. There are two aspects that apply to day Yeralef. Let's see what that means. Rabbi Yechon, a halacha dachadasar. Day 11 has one halacha. Has one unique halacha applied to it. Which is, achadasar hu delay bayi shimur. Day 11 does not require, does not obligate Shimur, does not obligate to be her, to be Shemir, Shem, if she sees on day 11, she does not have to keep day 12 as a Shmirat for day 11. That is only one halacha. Day 11 is unique in the sense that it does not obligate Shemir, Shem, Kinegdiyam. However, Holachrini, Ba'i Shimur. It does serve to, uh, as a Shemir, Yem, Kinegdiyam for other days, meaning, Day number 11 can be considered as a Shem Yom Kinegdiyam for day number 12, or day number 10. If she sees on day 10, she is indeed obligated to be Shem Yom Kinegdiyam day 11. Well, we said before that day 11 carries with it a unique halacha. It is a double halacha. It is in two aspects. Number one, lo yachad asar bo yishimur. Day 11 does not require a shimur. If there is a re on day 11, she is not required to be Shem day 12. For lo yishimur la siri havi. And in addition, it will not serve as a shimur for day number 12, for day number 10. Meaning, that day number 10 is not required to be shayim yom kinegadiyayim. And therefore, day number 11 has two aspects to himself. Number one, he does not require, does not obligate shayim yom kinegadiyayim if there is a riyah on his day, on day 11. On day 11. In addition, he does not serve as a shayim yom kinegadiyayim for day 10. Because day t- num- number 10 is also exempt from the halacha of being Yishayim Yom Kinegadim. So in conclusion, if an Isha sees on day 11, Bishamai require Shem Yishayim Kinegadim, Basil don't. According to Basil, that are not Bechayef, that do not obligate Shem Yishayim Kinegadim on day 11, what happens to day 10? There's Machlag, it's Rebbe Yechon Lakish. Rebbe says, even according to Basil, that does not obligate Shem Yishayim Kinegadim on day 11, however, that is only day 11. On day 10, she is required to be Shem Yishayim Kinegadim. Rishlogish on the other hand says, just like day 11 is not required, so too day 10 does not obligate her to be Shemir Yayim Kineke Yayim.